Using the quadruple bottom line approach, we were able to address issues and concerns on the four strategic directions, namely environmental conservation, equity and social development, economic prosperity, and destination management. Our first strategic direction is environmental conservation to conserve the natural attractions of the municipality of Panglao. The local government units quickly implemented Republic Act 9003 and Municipal Ordinance No. 4, Series of 2016, also known as the Environment Code on Solid Waste Management, since 2016. Indiscriminate disposal of wastewater is strictly prohibited following Republic Act 9275, the Clean Water Act of 2004. There is the strict prohibition of sewage and wastewater discharge into the sea. Hotels and resorts are required to have their own sewage treatment facilities. Tourist boats are required to have a waste receptacle, as provided for by Ordinance No. 6, Series of 2018 and Ordinance No. 5, Series of 2010. All residential and commercial structures are required strictly to have a three-chamber septic tank with adequate capacity. Violations of Section 51 of Presidential Decree No. 1067, the Water Code of the Philippines, based on the 2008 delineation survey conducted by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. The local chief executive issued letter memo dated February 22, 2019 regarding strict implementation of easement guidelines in Alona Beach to immediately remove, detach, or demolish all structures within the easement zone including beach beds, spa beds, signage, umbrellas, stalls, chairs, and tables beyond the demarcated areas. On the threat of coral degradation and other coral reef destruction, the local government unit has improved the capabilities of the Panglao Reef Rangers Task Force and Bantay Dagat through training, manpower, equipment, and adequate funding. Intensified monitoring, patrolling operations, and apprehensions of perpetrators of destructive and illegal activities such as fishing with the use of explosives, toxic substances, fine mesh nets, poaching, and cutting of mangroves. The LGU has required a strict compliance with carrying capacities for scuba diving and snorkeling sites, enforced environment-friendly behavior for all scuba divers and snorkelers, strictly enforce the no-anchoring policy in coral reefs and no bilge water discharge near the shore. The LGU has also ordered the installation of mooring buoys and markers on dive sites to enforce the carrying capacity of 60 dives per site per day. The LGU has strengthened partnership with dive operators, diving professionals, NGAs and NGOs in monitoring the health of coral reefs and residents, photogenic marine life such as frogfish, eels, turtles, nudie branches, stingrays, mollusks, crustaceans, animals and clownfish. The local government of Panglao has also initiated the spirit of volunteerism and cooperation with the private sector of tourism stakeholders in environmental protection and preservation, especially with issues in climate change mitigation. The LGU has improved the one-entry, one-exit facility for water activities like snorkeling, island hopping, and dolphin watching. The second strategic direction is equity and social development to improve residents' well-being and develop local capabilities. The local government unit has constructed and maintained green restrooms to address the issue of sanitation, lack or non-availability of public toilets in tourist areas. On the presence of stray dogs on the beach, the local government unit has implemented mandatory registration of dogs and regular vaccination against rabies through municipal ordinance on responsible pet ownership. Spaying and neutering of pet animals and stray dogs has also been strictly enforced. The LGU has implemented Municipal Ordinance 4-2016, Environmental Code, limiting the volume and disallowing the use of video okay or amplified sound and music from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. the following day. The LGU has also regulated the construction work that utilize heavy equipment and noisy machinery from 10 p.m. to 5 in the morning to minimize disturbance to nearby residents. There is the prohibition with the help of LTO the operation of motorcycles or scooters without mufflers. Through the adapted tourism master plan that Ide Alona Beach is the only zone for bars and businesses that will be allowed to have nightly video key regulated noise of music. The LGU has identified tourism industry skills required and conducted training needs analysis. 
It has also provided adequate and decent facilities to community-based enterprises. The LGU has identified government agencies, non-government organizations, and other private sector partners that can provide training and other forms of assistance. It has also selected target participants and has obtained commitment and participation. It has also provided food and transportation subsidy for participants who are part of the marginalized sectors. On the issue on sexual exploitation of children in travel and tourism and other social misdemeanors, the local government unit has active partnership with the Tourism Office, MSWDO, WCPD, and ECPAT. There is also the Strengthened Municipal Council for the Protection of Children. The LGU has also continued offering the Parents' Effectiveness Awareness Seminars. The third strategic direction is economic prosperity. This is to encourage local investments, promote inclusive growth, and equitable distribution of economic benefits from tourism. The LGU has been able to address the issues on unemployment and underemployment by continuously encouraging private establishments to hire qualified local staff, develop local capabilities needed by the tourism industry by conducting relevant skills and knowledge training for Panglawanos, Coordination by the PESO with the Municipal Tourism Office to determine the services and skills required so that training programs can be aligned with the needs of the industry. Coordination by PESO with the private sector to facilitate matching of skilled workers with the employment opportunities offered. The LGU has been monitoring tourism establishments for compliance with the Panglo First Policy by the Business Permits and Licensing Office in coordination with the Municipal Tourism Office. With collected revenues and generated income from the local and national economy, the LGU has been able to address the need for more horizontal and vertical infrastructure requirements for the tourism industry. The LGU has also been able to address the issues on the lack of tourism facilities and also providing economic opportunities by conducting training for the community members who will facilitate the recreational activities and serve as local guides on site. They also conducted training on how to operate community-based tourism enterprises. They have also built necessary infrastructure such as jetties, restrooms, holding areas, benches, help in refining tour itineraries and verifying operational costs. They also assisted in promotion and marketing of the community-based tours. The fourth and final strategic direction is destination management. This is to strengthen institutional arrangements and capacity to support sustainable tourism development. The concerns in shared governance and institutional support has also been addressed through the conduct of forums in soliciting ideas and means to collectively address tourism concerns. And they also improve the means of communication, cooperation and collaboration with associations of tourism establishments dive operators, people's organizations, and transport groups. The LGU has defined specific roles and responsibilities of the tourism office and its staff by converting it into a regular department. They also conducted capacity training to improve monitoring, data collection, and management. Finally, the LGU has given the municipal tourism office a big role in the decision-making process related to tourism. On disaster preparedness, the LGU has created a team of live responders under the Municipal Disaster Risk Redemption Management Office. They also commissioned a reputable organization to conduct trainings on beach life saving. They also installed lifeguard stations in selected beaches with high density of tourist traffic. Established port codes for monitoring, providing assistance, first aid, emergency evacuation, reporting, and communications. Provided additional stations and outposts and equipment for monitoring tourism sites. They also involved the local Philippine National Police in the Tourism Disaster Risk Reduction Management Operations. And finally, they involved the local Philippine National Police in the Tourism Disaster Risk Reduction Management Operations. The LGU has expanded the role of the Tourism Council as a Destination Management Organization or DMO tasked to monitor compliance of service providers to the standards of service, mitigating measures, carrying capacity of all sites and other tasks that will ensure sustainability of the industry. On standardization of tourism frontliners and services, the LGU has been able to 
provide assistance for the accreditation of public utility vehicles, established public transportation terminals and designated parking spaces in strategic locations within commercial areas, strictly enforced traffic rules and regulations, conducted forum and traffic management schemes prior to implementation. The LGU has required strict compliance with accepted and rational industry standards in terms of seaworthiness, machinery, safety and communications, equipment on board, tourism amenities and crew qualifications. Provided assistance with marina registration and related concerns. Regulated and monitored boat charter rates.